We want to know, is the average age that someone starts using social media significantly higher than the national average? And we're going to use the TI-84 calculator as much as we possibly can, which turns out to be a ton. Now, the very first thing that we want to do is to decide what is that national average. I did just a little bit of searching around online and found that that national average is equal to 12. This is going to help me set up our hypotheses. So that null hypothesis is that the population mean mu is equal to 12, but our question says we think it's significantly higher. So that's my alternative hypothesis that mu is greater than 12. Now we're also gonna need our sample information. My students did a survey and came up with these results. So they found that the average was 12.463 in this group. We had a sample standard deviation of 4.091 and a sample size of 54. So what else do we need for this hypothesis test? We're gonna do this type of test and go through each of these five steps. Now, step number one, the hypotheses is already done. Step number two is to find that critical Z value. Now, normally we would use a table to look up this Z value, but we are not going to do that. Instead, let's use the calculator's distribution menu. To find that critical Z value, we need to define our normal curve. And I can use the normal curve because I've got a sample size large enough one that is greater than 30. Now this normal curve is gonna contain our expected value, which is our hypothesized mean that's gonna go right there in the middle. And notice that I've got this tail in the upper right. That tail represents my 5%. That's my alpha or my significance level of 0.05. If we land in this upper 5%, that means that we are significantly higher than the other 95% then would be not significant, but we want Z scores. So I know that the mu in the middle is a Z score of zero. What I really want is that critical Z score that cuts off that upper 5%. In the calculator, we want to go to that distribution menu and the distribution menu is second of VARS. So I'm going to go second followed by VARS. I'm looking for the inverse norm. So I arrow down to number three and then I hit enter and it asks me for the area. Well, I want the area in that single tail that was my upper 5% or 0 0.05 and then enter. I am on that standard normal curve. So we're gonna leave mu equal to zero and that standard deviation equal to one. I don't bother with left, center, and right, so I'm just gonna skip right past that and then paste and then enter. And we get this Z-score of negative 1.6, let's call that 645. But I know that I'm not on the left-hand side, I am on the right-hand side. So that's gonna give me a positive 1.645. So we've got that critical value. Next, we wanna compute that Z value for our sample mean. And we could certainly use this formula, or we could go ahead and use the test feature in our 84. To get to the test menu, we're gonna click on the stat key and then arrowing over to tests, we want that very first Z test. So we'll hit enter. And then I do want statistics. I'm not gonna enter the data into the calculator. Instead, we're gonna use the statistics that we found. Arrowing down, I can put in my hypothesized mean, this is 12, and then continuing to work our way down, they're asking me for the population standard deviation, but I only have the sample standard deviation. We're gonna use that to estimate sigma, and that is 4.019, and then enter. We also need X bar. X bar is our sample mean, and that sample mean was 12.463. Our sample size was 54, and this line is for our alternative hypothesis, which is greater than. So arrowing over to greater than, and then we'll hit enter. And then I'm gonna arrow down to calculate. This is my very, very favorite part. Let's hit enter. And we end up with that Z value. We get 0.83166, let's call that 0.832.
We've got our test value, but now we've got to make that decision to either reject or fail to reject that null hypothesis. So what does 0.832 mean? Let's go ahead and put this onto our normal curve. So it lives right here, halfway between zero and that cutoff of 1.645. This lines up with our sample mean. So if I enlarge this a little bit, our sample mean has a z-score of 0.832. That z-score of 0.832 lands us in our not significant region. In order to land in the significant upper 5%, being 0.832 standard deviations away is not far enough. We would need to be that 1.645 standard deviations away. Okay, so what does this mean? In terms of our decision, it means that we fail to reject that null hypothesis we are actually close enough to that population mean being 12. So now that we've got that decision of fail to reject, we need that conclusion next. So back to thinking of these as not significant or significant. Our conclusion goes like this. There is not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean is significantly higher than 12. I hope this was helpful so much more that your TI-84 can do. Check this out next.